Introduction to Refractory Symptoms and Palliative Sedation Therapy. Please note the following copyright. Introducing the new Symptom Management Guideline for Refractory Symptoms and Palliative Sedation Therapy. Now we didn't want to just give you a set of instructions. We were asking you to stop and wait before you sedate. Appendix A has a decision support tool with a number of questions to guide your decision making. If you consulted with the palliative specialist team to make sure all options have been explored, don't forget to collaborate. Has at least one criteria for refractory symptoms been met, or are there other treatments they could possibly tolerate? These are the criteria for refractory symptoms. One or any combination of the following needs to be true. Has there been discussion and agreement with the patient, family, and care team, or is there still debate that this is the best course of action? Now, can the care setting accommodate palliative sedation therapy? These are the requirements for the care setting to consider. And we need to communicate through documentation of decision-making process and the consent. We need to plan for ongoing support of the patient, family, and staff through regular assessment and conversations. So stop and wait before you sedate and consider the following. Collaborate with the palliative specialist team. Is there any other treatment they could tolerate? Have the criteria for refractory symptoms been met? Is there any debate amongst the patient, family, and team? Strive for consensus if possible. Can the care setting accommodate, or are you going to make the manager irate when you suggest it? Communicate through written documentation of the decision-making process and the consent. Relate to the patient, family, and staff. Have a plan for ongoing support and communication. Now you have the green light. You can review the guideline for refractory symptoms and palliative sedation therapy.